afternoon and welcome to Eat Smoke Drink, another episode of Eat Smoke Drink. I am Eat Smoke Drink and thank you for joining me today. Um, this is the Glendronach Single Barrel 1995. A little background on it. So Glendronach um, is quite a big brand, distillery bottlings, you get a lot of them around. And um, it's one of the few distillery bottlings that I find is very compelling. Even the, 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 the run of the mill, you know, you can find it in most liquor store distillery bottlings I find to be quite compelling, but sometimes, just sometimes, you will get an exciting single barrel expression like this one here. So this is a 21 year old 1995 um, distilled Glendronic. It is a PX Punchin. So PX stands for Pedro Jimenez Punchin. Pedro Jimenez, a little background on it, is a type of sherry it is one of the most prestigious sherries you can get. It is thick and syrupy. They make sherry, or should I say, Pedro Jimenez sherry, out of basically like a raisin type um, grape. So they, they dry it on the vine and it's kind of like a noble rot type of rot. And not quite noble rot, but it like, kind of like dries on the vine and then they make sherry out of that. So you can imagine it's a con completely condensed grape. It becomes like a syrup, they put it in a barrel and it becomes this glorious nectar of the gods. And they take that barrel and they ate whiskey with it. Now that's what you call a PX cask. A puncheon is just a shape of the barrel. So a puncheon is quite a big barrel actually. So this particular one is the cask 4418. It is quite reputable, highly rated out there. And that's why I picked it as well. Uh, there's 651 bottles of this particular sherry uh, PX punch and for Glendronic 21 year old. So what to expect with single barrels? When you have a Glendronic uh, normal bottling, you always, it's, it's pretty, you know, all of them taste the same. Um, just like in distillery bottlings, they're all pretty tapered. But when you have a single barrel expression, it becomes much more unique barrel to barrel. And it's quite cool that Glendronic releases their own line of single barrel whiskies. Let's get nosing and see how it is. Oh. I mean it's you can you can you can really pick the heavy, heavy, heavy sherry influence in there. Heavy mineral. I'm talking like, uh, imagine being by the riverside stones. I mean, like a raisin juice, almost like a raisin juice with dates in it, like you can get the dates. Cinnamon, liquid fruit cake, all the way through, like Christmas cake. But I'm also getting a slight soiliness to it as well. Hmm. The nose is very nice, but there is a slight al alcoholic smell to it um, because it is quite a high ABV and it's 52.6, but not as high as some others, but you know, you can definitely... Mm. I'm getting, it's really strange, I'm getting a slight medicinal character right at the end. And this might sound really strange, but I'm getting like a, like a very, very faint hint of coriander root. Hmm. Earthiness, coriander root, all earthiness, medicinal aspect to it, which is quite interesting. And this is what's beautiful about it. You all smell this beside a Glendronic Parliament, for example, which is a 21 year old, and they'll both be completely different, same age. Same age, a lot of the same barrel, um, PX as well, but very, very different smell. That's what you get with a single barrel. Mmm, okay. With the water sample, I'm getting a lot of, a lot more cinnamon and raisin in there. It becomes a lot sweeter. Funny enough, the earthiness, the stoniness goes away, the minerality goes away a little bit. Interesting, with the water, it makes it a little bit more two-dimensional. The complexity is tapered back with water. I don't know what I like more. They both smell delicious, but the complexity is tapered back. Let's get tasting. Mm. 
Mm. Wow. The mouthfeel. The mouthfeel is really good. It is oily. Not oily. Was it oily? Like, it just permeates through your mouth. I'm not sure if oily is the right word for it, but it feels oily. It feels chewy. It lingers. It stays there. Mm. The mouthfeel. I can't help but notice the mouthfeel. Mm, very heavily tannin, very heavy tannins, slightly bitter on the back end, and I don't know if I like that, but also very sweet, so it's very bittersweet. I'm getting dark chocolate, probably because it's reminding me of that bittersweet of the dark chocolate. Mm. Mm. I'm getting a smoky leather. A smoky leather, not too much smoke, but more leather. Kind of like, um, you know, like a, like, a, like, a, like a cabinet in your house that you don't use often. I'm getting a lot of that. Mm. I mean, it's spice. It's spice all the way through. I'm getting a lot of cinnamon. I'm getting a lot of fruit cake. I mean, that's just quintessential sherry. There's actually not too much to it. It is really a heavy, heavy sherry influence. And if someone was to tell you that they've mixed whiskey with sherry, you'd probably believe it because it is such a heavy sherry influence. And a slight metallic aftertaste, a minerality. That can also be a bit of a sherry trait, a slight metallic taste right at the end of it. Not, when I say metallic, I kind of describe it more like a, you know, like when you touch a, um, you know, like a galvanized, like galvanized nails or something, or galvanized metal, and you've got that kind of metally smell in your hand. I'm getting a bit of that. Let's try the water. But I'm getting the tannins. The tannins is heavy, very heavy. I think um, the irony of it is with water, the nose becomes less complex, but with water, the taste becomes more complex. I'm getting caramels, toffee, fudge. I'm getting cinnamon, a bit of nutmeg in there. I'm getting burnt butter. Mm, it becomes way more complex with water, actually. It's quite amazing. And of course, the ever prevailing raisin taste in there, the raisin taste. You know, it's like liquid raisin. I put a thousand raisins in water and put in a juicer. That's what you get. And I'm getting some dates as well. The earthiness comes through a bit more with water. And when I say earthiness, it sounds really weird, but like a wet soil. I'm getting a wet soil flavor with more water. So I'd, I'll decide that my decision is the Water sample is a better iteration of it. A fantastic, fantastic example of what a glendronic can be in a unique situation, not like a, you know, like a thousand barrels being into one for a flat flavor profile. Would, this, would I buy this again? You know what, I, I'm not quite sure if I would. Um, it is relatively good value for something quite a unique experience, but in saying that's probably about 130, 140 um, US dollars. So it is not the cheapest of all whiskies out there, but I think, I think I would buy it again. It is definitely quite a unique experience. It is something though that after a few more drams, it might progress a little bit more, but it's very easy to drink. So it's, there's no challenge to it. And the dangerous part about that is that you can just drink it and it, it can be a session whiskey and it's, that's it. You know, um, it's, it's one bottle, I think you'll be fine for the night. Cigar recommendations for this? Oh. I think something quite spicy or even peppery would be good with it because it is very sweet. It is a very sweet whiskey. So I'd say a Cuban, a Trinidad would be good with it. A Trinidad with that spice and that woody kind of um, um, difference to it would be good. Or something like an, uh, La Flor Dominicana, um, you know, Double Lejero or Scuro would be quite good. The sweetness will balance it out. The sweetness will give you that and obviously there's a bit of sugar in there with the sweetness. They'll balance you out with the nicotine. They'll balance you out with the strength of the cigar.
Thank you for joining me today, and today we're filming at GGX Flamingo here in Auckland, and uh, Sammy, uh, the proprietor of this fine establishment, has let me use his bar today, and he said, drink what you want, and so I might drink what I want in his bar. Thank you, and please hit subscribe, um, and ring that bell. See you again until next time, and let me know, hey, what's your favourite cask for um, cask number um, the last couple of years? Let me know, and why, I'll be very interested to know. Thank you. See you again.